Hi, I'm Maxine. And I'm Julie. And we are both uh, civil celebrants and we are trainers for the International College of Professional Celebrants. Um, And we get lots of questions from people who are thinking about coming on our course uh, and thinking about becoming celebrants. And one of the questions that we're asked often is, how much can a wedding celebrant earn? And that's a really, really interesting question. So what do you think are the factors that people should consider, Julie? I think... um... It isn't just about the wedding celebrant, to be honest. I think it's about any celebratory ceremony. Um, What we bring to it as celebrants and what we train people to do is to be able to find out exactly what the, the perfect ceremony is, what their day is looking like, to find out about them, their values, beliefs, and then to create this bespoke personalized ceremony. So how much do you charge for that? There might be a budget that they have, so that would be one thing that we need to find out. Um, Or it may be that they have got absolutely no idea. And I think the way that I would go about it would be to have a minimum of what I would charge because I know how many hours I would work on it. And personally, my minimum is 650. And then how much more do they want? Do they want symbolic rituals written in? Do they want you to write a poem? Do they want... um, extra enhancements to the ceremony and as those build so I would probably go up incrementally by 50 pounds each time Mm. that's sort of how I work do you work in a similar way um I will usually at the moment I charge basic of 695 right um and if they want me to include a a ritual in there I'll include it anyway but I will charge separately if they want me to go to the venue for a rehearsal for example right so there's different elements so rehearsal would be extra and what about traveling uh, i would charge that as well so i'll charge them the traveling and then i'll charge them an hourly rate um i know our colleague rebecca includes rehearsals she does as well so if it's an online rehearsal then i i will do that for nothing because it's it's a walkthrough and you've done it lots of times before but if they physically want me to be there um my view is i could be doing other things and you know I need to charge for my time and it is a service so I think it's really difficult isn't it when you first start Mm. you are desperate to get a wedding and what happens is quite often people will drop their prices won't they to get get a foot on the ladder and we can all see that because I was in that position thinking when am I going to get one when am I going to get one I have got no experience how can I charge the same um and I think there are reasons we think you shouldn't be doing that um if you start undercutting and going selling yourself because you're cheaper then it cheapens the whole profession so you are if you have trained with us you have been having excellent five star celebrancy training you have got all the tools you need to do the job properly and extremely well so why should you charge less sometimes um once celebrants have trained they come to me and say well it's for a friend And I get that, mates rates and everything. But if you're going to do that, then make sure that you are going to be able to have all the photographs that you can to put on your social media, to put on your website. And that sort of evens it up then, Mm -hmm. because that in itself has a good value, um, having different shots and different um, photographs that you can use for different occasions. So that would be the only time I think that I would reduce my price if it was a close friend family and I was going to get something um, visual out of it do you feel the same yeah absolutely and I recently got a wedding ceremony from a girl I used to speak to on the platform when I was commuting into work my old job and there used to be a group of us and um, we became friends with her really quickly because she made really nice cake and um, <laughs> she used to bring us cake now and again um, and we kept in touch because she moved into um, a travel agency and we we met again via networking so that was really good but I have you know I have charged her exactly the same um you know it's I think it's important to value your skills and experience as Julie was saying um I think another factor to consider is how many um weddings would you like to do in a year um how many of your weekends would you like to spend doing weddings so for example my other half over the summer he works weekends and um, so I choose there are some weekends that I'm not going to to work um, and therefore I know that, that that I'm going to have to turn down some business and give it to somebody else um, so that's another question to ask yourself because what you earn depends on how many events uh, in a year you're you're going to do so uh, I've had 15 
uh, this year in my first year, thank you to the brilliant training that I got and the support in digital marketing. But I have to ask myself, at what point do I hit the spot where I think I don't want to do, is it 30, is it 20? What what works for me? Um, and so that's definitely something to consider, isn't it? And also we, we teach combined course. So amongst the weddings that we'll be doing, we've also got funerals and we've got baby namings and we've got vow renewals and we've got adoption ceremonies. So if we're just talking about weddings, you probably will not realistically do many in the winter whereas you may have more funerals. So what you earn as a wedding celebrant um, is also going to be complemented by the other income that you have with your other types of ceremony. If you're only going to do weddings, then you're going to have a very, very busy summer season and then you perhaps take your holidays in the wintertime because the demand is high at the moment. Um, What a celebrant brings to a wedding is so special that the the demand for it has really incrementally grown year on year and is is set to become even more popular, I think. There's um, a recent Law Commission um, proposal to government, um, which is advocating that rather than a venue be licensed, that we should have the right for civil celebrants to be licensed. Now, there are no guarantees with this. But it is thought that keeping in line with America and Canada and Australia and New Zealand, that that is the way it's going to go. So eventually, if you have an accredited qualification, we suggest uh, you're going to be able to do the legal part of the wedding as well. And that also will have an impact on what you can earn. Yeah, great opportunity. So there's a growth, there's going to be a growth industry in civil celebrant led weddings overall. It's very difficult to pinpoint and say you're going to earn this amount because you can you can run it part time, you can mm-hmm. run it full time. I run it alongside another job I have working with ICPC. Max, you have other jobs. Two, job, two, two jobs. Two jobs. So <laughs> it's it's one of those careers that you can make fit around your life. It's a it's probably the best job in the world. Um, Without doubt, without I love doubt, it. <laughs> um, you can wake up in the morning knowing you're going to make a difference and you're going to bring joy to a wedding um, and the couple are going to be over the moon and you're going to make everybody laugh and cry probably. So it's it's a great job. The work usually is the, in the run up to the wedding. And once the ceremony is done, that's it. You, you're completed. That's finished. And then hopefully you'll get good references and testimonials so that you build your reputation in your community. Mm. That's important, isn't it, It reputation? It is, absolutely. So I think, um, you know, really in summary, what are we saying? We're saying think about um, how often um, you want to work. work. Um, Think about your market um, and how you know, what they're going to pay and think about the range of services. Um, Are you going to have a core service and then add-ons or are you going to have a a higher price? Um, And, you know, there are things to consider, like if you don't want to, if you only want to do a few, um, you can put your prices up because that will take some of the market out. If you want to do a lot of weddings, you might want to consider that. But as we said, we think really don't undersell because it really, really undervalues the profession. Um, So, Good luck with your celebrant journey. We love to see new celebrants on the market. There's plenty of room for all of us. And, uh, you know, use your celebrancy in, in a way that suits your lifestyle. And good luck. Good luck.